is it is a much longer race and uh for women's it's not always been um uh, as the first lake uh they were the first people the Mi'kmaq people to navigate the waters of Lake Banuk. And uh, I'm sure there are people that will navigate these waters and go on those long distance trips because canoeing in here in Canada is just such a popular part of life. So we can see a uh, competitor from the USA there, Azusa Murphy. Uh, she goes in lane two. Magda Stani from Poland, who's already raced today, will go in lane three. Maria Maillard, very experienced Chilean athlete. She was good in the Super Cup in Oklahoma last year. We've got the Super Cup in Oklahoma to look forward to towards the end of August this year as well. We may well see her there. There she is in picture, the Chilean athlete. Now we should see Ludmila Lutzan who's done a lot of racing and it's great to see her get on the podium as well there she is in picture it's been a, as we spoke about earlier it's been a really tough year for the ukraines particularly seemed to take its toll on her uh, of course the olympic medalist and uh, her partner anastasia chet verikova but so it was great to see them pick up the silver medal in the c2 500 meters just over an hour ago and then next to annika losk the German. And then Viraj Bala. Now, Viraj Bala should be over in lane eight. We saw Viraj Bala a couple of days ago. About to get underway. Looks like almost a full start from her. Um, and she was all smiles. She didn't do so well in the Hungarian selection, but she's decided to just have a slightly easier year to take a breath for the year. There's going to be a really intense build up towards the Olympic Games in Paris. So she's competing in many of the non Olympic events. And it looks like we don't have anybody in lane seven, which is a shame. And even from this point uh, above uh, Laurence, you can see the different angles that the paddlers set themselves up at for the start. And that is depending on which side you paddle. And it seemed like there is a bit of a tailwind right now. So the athletes want to uh, make sure they have uh, an angle that will help them get the best start as possible. Yeah, and what can happen uh, with, a, with a side wind, can't it, is it can favor uh, paddler on one side which is a shame and the good thing we've seen although it has been a little bit blustery sometimes ahead with sometimes a tailwind here is it's been fair so if you find yourself in lane one lane five or lane nine you still have a good chance of winning the race and that's the best thing we can hope for is to have as uh, even of a field as possible for for our events here um, and it seems like uh, Maria right now and uh, Lumila are having a uh, kind of a uh, uh, <laughs> middle of the race not middle of the race but we're still early but they're getting into their middle of the race pace right now uh, and they're just cruising together uh, and trying to you know get ahead so it's going to be a very mental game for them yeah it is indeed i wonder like you already said that about mentally in a thousand meters being a longer race you have that time to think which can be a real challenge you've got to block out those distractions you've got to concentrate on your own race but these two will be very aware of each other uh, you know alongside and interesting in fact isn't it that um the Dmila looks and paddles on the right. Maria Maillard is on the left, so they're kind of almost uh, closer to each other. They can certainly sense where their competitor is. They can certainly see each other, so it's going to be about uh, a mental game, uh, knowing that you're neck and neck with the person right beside you, and if she pushes, you can't afford to not do it, but then you also need to make sure you keep your energy until the end. And this is not something we're used to as a uh, women's canoeer, because Again, 1,000 meters are not a usual event for us. No, that's right. No, and, and it's what can be difficult. So as we can see the German just at the right of the picture do really well um, as well. It's good to see Annika Lust trying to go with these early leaders as we approach the halfway point. Um, but if you get into the rhythm, these two very similar stroke rates, slightly higher stroke rate perhaps for the Chilean athlete, but it can actually be quite hard sometimes to then lift that and move on to the next level. So they don't want to sit too much, um, I guess, otherwise it's hard to go through the gears. And you want to keep as much efficiency because now we're at the halfway point already. And you want to make sure that the energy that you add for the first half doesn't diminish because you can get really stuck at the end of the race if someone de decides to pick up. So it's all about conserving as much energy as possible throughout the race, but also not getting too far behind um, because you won't be in the race for the uh, last few meters there. 
No, and, and talk about efficient technique. Um, I'm guessing that Ludmilla Lutz does a lot of work on her technique with the coaches. She seems to be executing that very well. Good luck on the front of the stroke at the moment. Looking great. And not only her, like all the top four right now are really looking like they are putting the weight on the blade, but also keeping that um, as forward as possible. Not too much bouncing happening and not too much, you know, sideway movement. So very efficient looking and very great strokes. Yeah, really good lock onto the blade. A lot of the paddlers talk about that, don't they? Lifting themselves, getting all the way onto their blade. You know, water isn't necessarily a stable platform, but the more solidly you put the blade in, the more you can rely on that, get all your weight onto it and lift. And the boat then lifts through, and uh, you don't waste any energy having to steer or balance. But we'll see when the camera pans out. Looks at Miller Lutz and still has the lead as we get down to the last 200 meters, just towards the last 200 meters. As we pan out now, we can see Zorn's got a boat length on the others, but I guess this is the time when they start moving through the gears, picking up the stroke rate, and want to put Ludmilla Lutz on under pressure if they can have any chance of taking that gold medal away from them. And that's where we're going to see uh, where everyone's experience as a battler comes out, because some people will have the last push uh, in them to go all the way to the end, and it seems like Ludmilla decided to take a, uh, a step ahead in, uh, in front of the others to make sure that uh, she would play a little bit on the on the mind right so she's ahead and she's doing great she is doing great they are coming they're having to go at uh, maria maillard has been trucking it right the way from 900 meters is trying to pick it up but at the minute lumina looks a must know she's got clear water on the rest of the field she's picked it up once again and this will be a great victory for her and uh, all respect to the German as well. Fantastic from her. Annika Lusk going really, really well, trying to put Maillard under pressure for the silver medal, as is Viraj Bala from Hungary, but no doubt about the winner. A deserved winner, a great character for the sport, Ludmilla Lutzan. Good result for her. Maria Maillard in second, and Annika Lust for Germany takes the bronze. Well, there's a very proud Ukrainian there, you know, proud of her nation. It's been a very, we keep saying this, but it's so true that a very difficult year for her and for her teammates and for her.